Hello and welcome to this Christmas reflection. It's just a couple of days to the big day, so we hope all the presents are wrapped, all the hard work is done or well underway. But perhaps in common with many people today, the economic situation means you just don't have the money for the food and presents you would like this year. Or maybe you're going to miss a loved one you've lost over the past year. The good news is that whatever the past year has been like for you, what really matters about Christmas and what we really celebrate is that Jesus was born into this world so that we as human beings could have eternal life with him. So today we're talking about that wonderful line in Hark the Herald Angels Sing that says, born that man no more may die. Now I have to say, in this day of age and equality and diversity, uh, we must point out that this carol was written a long time ago. Uh, and in those days, man meant humankind. So we hope the women will stay with us because they are absolutely included. Many people prefer not to think about death, but there are some quite funny quotes about it nevertheless. There's some question mark about whether this is accurate, but Mark Twain is said to have been in London when back in America, it was reported that he had died. He sent a message saying, reports about my death have been greatly exaggerated. Then Winston Churchill said, I am prepared to meet my maker. Whether my maker is prepared for the great ordeal of meeting me is another matter. Now, I'm sure that meeting Churchill was not a major problem for God, but I do hope Churchill was really prepared to meet God himself. Then what about George Carlin? Now, I have to say, I've never heard of him. I don't know whether you have, but he said, I'm always relieved when someone is delivering a eulogy and I realise that I'm listening to it. Or Spike Milligan on his gravestone, it says, I told you I was ill, but the graveyard where he's buried didn't think it was appropriate for a gravestone, so it's written in Gaelic. Woody Allen said, I'm not afraid to die. I just don't want to be there when it happens. But what's the Christian's view of death? There's a well-known saying that the only things that are certain in life are death and taxes. It's talking about physical death. And I'm glad to tell you that the saying is not true. Now, I can't give you any comfort about taxes, but I can tell you that not everyone will die. Now, we are a bit worried about encroaching on the talks for the next two days. But um, Karen's going to read a short passage from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verses 16 to 18. Okay. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This Bible passage tells us two really important things. Firstly, Jesus is coming back so some people won't die a physical death. And secondly, all Christians will live forever with Jesus. So as Christians, we believe that Jesus was born into this world as a baby and that he died a terrible death by crucifixion, but that he rose again and is alive today. I think I can hear some hallelujahs out there. And we also believe that one day he's coming back to take all his people to be with himself. We call it the second coming. We have no idea when he will come back. But when he does, some Christians will be alive and they will be caught up in the clouds to meet Jesus. So they won't die. It could be you. We know that born that man no more may die obviously isn't talking about physical death because millions of Christians have already died. It's talking about when Jesus comes back 
And according to the verse we read, the Christians who have died are the dead in Christ, so they will rise first. The Apostle Paul said that for him, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. I'm not sure that many of us can echo that statement. We may be confident about eternal life with Jesus, but this life now is what we know, and it makes us a bit insecure that eternal life is beyond our understanding. Most people live as though they never will die, but actually we know we will die unless Jesus comes back first. But because Christ came, we can rejoice that physical death is only the start of a wonderful new, be new beginning. It may be the best known verse in the Bible, but we can't finish, born that man no more may die, without quoting John 3.16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's a joyful note of celebration to finish our reflection this Christmas. We celebrate that we have eternal life because Jesus came, that we have eternal life because Jesus was born. And we have a future that will surpass anything that we know now. Jesus was born for that. So we do wish you a very happy Christmas as you celebrate the birth of Jesus. Let's pray as we finish. Father, we do thank you that you have given us the most tremendous gift of new life. And not just life itself, but life that goes on forever, a life that is with you forever, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And we do say, Lord, we are so thankful that you have come into our lives and changed them and have brought us into relationship with yourself. Our heart's desire is that others, friends, family, acquaintances, will come to know you too. So Lord, this Christmas, May you bless and use our church as we spread good news. In Jesus' name, Amen.